Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this gorgeous gift bag. I'm calling it a squash top gift bag because you'll see in a minute when I show you how it opens. But basically it is really lovely. Now this has got long straps and I'm going to shorten the straps for the next one but I just want to show you that you can have it either way but I think it looks so pretty. I've used this gorgeous Prima flower which I've had. I've got four of them. I've had them lying around for a while now and then I've just used some of my um, like fake leaves there as well and I think that's a real nice kind of focus part on it and then I've used my little hardware, my little um, buckles there and this is all stuck on this card so you can see the normal card is underneath the patterned uh, paper um, but I've just added these bits, they strengthen the, the gift bag but also I think just kind of make it look like that's all the way around so it's a good way to add that feature without using more card than you need um, and again on the top that's continued so it just opens, I've got velcro here and then it pulls that one up and then pulls that one up and you can see these side bits squash down on top of each other so that's why I've called it that so it isn't hard, that, you know I, I don't ever really put anything up that's hard but there is a bit more um, I'd say um, it's just a different construction so there are a few more steps so as always watch the tutorial through first um, and I will try and obviously break that all down for you um, rather than just diving straight in. So <laughs> this is what we're going to make. It's got a nice size. It's three by eight and a half and it's really deep and it's eight inches tall. So again, you can get plenty in here. Oh, and as always, it folds flat. So you just open it up, squeeze in the sides and again, you can store the whole thing away. Just have to keep the flower either like so or lifted up so it doesn't get squashed. But perfect okay so for this one and that's using the VNA papers and I'm using them again for this one so just make sure I'm all in frame there so this is the pinky flower they actually worked quite well because that one's got a slight bluey color to it and actually until you look at these papers but this color here is a bit more of a bluey kind of green anyway so it did I could get away with it it did kind of just work this one works perfectly and it actually almost looks like the same kind of flower so I've already put that together and on the back you can see I've just used some hot glue and used these leaves and that's them there and all it is if you go to somewhere like Ikea or the range and just go to their, their dried you know their fake flower section and just buy some of the green stems and then just cut them down and you get such lovely more real life looking you know leaves <laughs> okay so we'll talk through all those bits in a minute now I've gone and already scored and cut the actual paper I'm using and I'm going to talk you through on the template because again this paper is so busy and crazy you just can't see those score lines at all it's not until I fold them that you can see where they are and I think it's going to be too confusing scoring is very straightforward it's this bit here at the top which is just a little bit more detailed so I will be bringing them in in a minute but I'm just going to go straight in and just start going through the um, template. So this is, let me just bring my, move my camera slightly there, there we go. Okay so every time I score I'm going to draw a black marker line just so I know that I've gone through every single line with you. Okay this is straightforward, the first one along your 12 inch side make sure if you've got pattern paper that the direction is facing up now so it's in its right orientation um, and you're going to score at 3 and 11 and a half. Okay so there's your 3 and 11 and a half. Then rotate your cardstock and you're going to score at 3, 4 and a half and 10. Okay, now this four and a half inch one, you're gonna you're gonna do all this same scoring on both pieces of twelve by twelve because you need two pieces. But this four and a half one, because you're gonna have it folding flat, on one piece you're gonna score all the way down, like I have here, but on the other piece you're just gonna score to that first score line. So those of you that watch a lot of my tutorials and do a lot of the fold flat bags, you'll completely understand this. Because what you don't want is you don't want that score line on the front of your bag, you only want it on the back. So one of these 12 by 12 pieces is your back and one's the front. So the back one, in this case, this piece, because I've done the score line all the way through, but on the front one you will just do that score line just to this first score line. Okay? That's the only difference between the two pieces. So there are now my three, four and a half, or ten, or three, four and a half, just to there, and ten. That's what you'll have on both pieces. Then rotate it back again. You're going to score at one and a half, down past that first score line and down to this second score line here, just to there, okay? Okay, like so, just down to that one there. 
So you should have that rectangle and then your bottom square. So that is all the scoring done with the scoreboard, so get rid of that. Now we need to do a little bit of scoring with our um, stylus and our ruler. Okay, so now we need to do some scoring within this little rectangle here. So at the bottom of this one and a half inch score line, you're just going to score from there down to the bottom left and bo bottom right corners of that rectangle. So just score there and then I'm just going to go over that. Next we need to do some scoring up in this square here. So what you want to do is from this score line, okay, so not that one that just goes to there, from this one that goes all the way down, so this would be that three inch score line, with your ruler just come, a, come in at two inches and just put a little marker just there, two inches, you can see there, two inches, okay. From that marker now there, you're going to then score down to the bottom right hand corner, okay. So just like that. So that is the score line you want to do. So you've come across here, this distance here is two inches, and then score down. Then you want to do two inches from the outer side. So I'll just use my pen here because I've already scored. But you then want to score from that point down. Like so. So you should have your two score lines crossing over like that, each one coming in at two inches. Okay, so this will all make sense in a minute, but you need to do that on both pieces. So you'll have both pieces that look like this, obviously scored. If you want to do the template like I've done and keep it, then that's fine. The only difference being is this score line here, one will just be to there, and one will be all the way through. Okay, so get those all prepared. Okay, so I'm going to start burnishing this one. So just go along, and it's just all of the score lines, the ones that you can. So really the straight ones, so that one, that one, that one. like so and then these ones here if you just kind of pinch them up like so and again like so you can see there you just get that little triangle and then you can also then just kind of pinch that one down to that point there as well okay now you want to do some cutting so this is again along the template with the bottom facing you this is all the top where you've got that you just want to cut up this school line here and this one here and then you're going to remove that piece completely like so and then just kind of take a little wedge off of each of these corners here and take a little wedge off of that corner and that corner let me just move my pattern paper okay so that's what you want along the bottom you can see the wedges have taken out of there this piece is removed and a little wedge taken off there and there. Okay, that is it. That's all you need to cut away from these bags because we're keeping all of this. This is the piece that's going to squash in. Now, to start working these score lines, where you've burnished that main one there, if you kind of bring it up like so, and you want to, this top side, you want to kind of bend up. You see, like so, so you're forming that triangle. Because you've scored there, it should naturally fall into that position and it will create this top corner. So can you see there? So that, that score line that you've done needs to go down inside. And you know you've got it right when this all is nice and flush and you've got a perfect right angle, perfect corner there, because that is the top of the gift bag. Okay? And then you can just, with that other one, just fold it in just so it's going to help the next piece because obviously that's going to be stuck together. All right, so that one like so and that one like so. Hope that makes sense. Right, I'm now going to move on to my actual proper pattern paper and now what we want to do is stick them together. So this is my tab here, that half inch tab that you've got on the very end. You can either put your double sided tape along there, I'm going to use my wet glue and I'm just going to Pop that all along my tab and then grab your other piece and you're sticking the side down which has got nothing cut out of it. This is your other tab so that needs to be free at the other end and you're going to join this up. Again this pattern is crazy but just make sure all your score lines line up and it is perfectly the top lines up and the bottom like so. And you can see there where I've taken out my joins. 
because I want to use all these papers but I understand they're not always great for um, filming on but hopefully showing you that template has helped a lot. So now I flip it over you can see there I've got that nice join. Now this is where I've done my pieces so there's my bit that folds in sorry folds down like so like that okay so that's what you should be able to do with yours now if you bring this top flap down and then where you've done that two inch score line that will come up but now you need to see help along that other one because we've stuck it together so just pull up that other side and it should just still go along that score line that you've done it's just going to need a little bit of work because it's got that join so this is what I mean about it's not difficult but it was just a little bit more in, you know detailed so if you can see there what I've done fold that whole piece down bring one triangle up like so and then bring your other side up that would have been the harder one because that's where you've got that join but just work them both and make sure that the top here is all nice and flush now you won't be able to put both of them at the same time and that's where we now need to do a little bit of cutting so if I flip this over um, actually it might be better if I show you on the white side because I think you can at least see the score lines and the triangle so at the moment you will have this triangle but you'll have this weird bit here and that's what's stopping them both from lying flat so what we need to do now is from the I bring in the template actually what we're going to now cut so you imagine you've got another piece attached which is this bit here so you'll have two pieces but basically you just want to cut from the corner here down to about half an inch up so if I just take off this next one you can't do this when they're not attached because otherwise your tab won't have anything to stick to there so it's best to do it once they're together but that's what you want to do so you can see I haven't gone right down to the that score line it's about half an inch that I've left so if I do that now on this one so again if I bring that all the way up there you can see there's my join but you're doing everything within get all this in frame so I'm going to come from that corner where I stuck it down stuck them together and just cut in like I said about half an inch up and then again on this side here like so if I just bring that up now can you see there that's what you want. I'm hoping that that's coming out well. So it's about half an inch up within that rectangle shape, but it's from corner to corner from the top of that rectangle shape. Okay, so that's the side. So now, when you bring over both of those pieces, one can go under the other. So if I just bring that up, like so. Can you see there? Because we've taken out that bulk and it allows that to sit now within that next fold like so and you get a perfect fold that's what you want so just you know work with it whatever works for you you may find you've got to take a little bit more away you shouldn't if it's all you know you followed those measurements but that's what you want to do so the next one's a little bit more fiddly again because obviously it's within it's kind of it's starting to form its 3d shape because we've got to stick this together again if you're a bit more confident and you know what you're doing with these you can do them without them being stuck together but it will just give you a weaker bond so if you imagine we cut that now from that point you've only got that tiny little bit of card there to stick to this um, so it is better to do it together but sometimes it, you know these more fancier bags we've got to kind of work a little bit more at them so hopefully you're still enjoying it Okay, so I've put my glue on that one. Just lay it all down flat and then that one will perfectly meet. So if you've got to help it along a little bit, just make sure you've got all those joins and score lines all lined up. Okay, like so. So now we've got it like this. So that's that corner that we've worked on. And now we've got to do the same. So again, you, you'll have your score lines. So work in, work in your score lines first, your triangle ones, so that one's already done, that one where I've just joined it again, I've just got to kind of help it across like so, okay, and then again I'm going to cut in, no, I'll do it that way so you can see it, so that's the side, so I'm going to cut now from that corner where I've joined it, and again about half an inch up like 
so you can see there where the fold is and where I've actually cut it. So the fold is here and I've cut it to there. Again, it's about half an inch. But now, if I just fold in the base, it will fold completely flat. And you've got a box. Okay, so there you have it. That's what you need. Now remember, one of these pieces, you will have your score line up here, that, that one and a half the four and a half, sorry, score line that we've done. That is your folding score line. So here, if you now squeeze in your sides, obviously you would have burnished those in so it will work. This needs to be open when you do that, but now you can also test that it will fold flat, like so. Okay, and once we stick all that down, that's how that will be as well. Okay, so next what you want to do is fold, um, stick down our base. So the side, the, the side where you've got that extra score line I was talking about, fold that down first, then fold in your sides, and then your front panel will be the last one to go down so you get that nice finish. So if I just flip this over, I'm just going to pop some glue. I'm using a, a much, um, I'm using a, a paper to make this as opposed to a cardstock, so that's probably why I'm, you can see me like trying to hold it all in place all the time. So I, that's why I added the cardstock, just to give it that, um, just that bit more strength really, just to give it, you know, make it a bit more sturdy. So I just folded those two in, and then this one here, and then just bring that one up and over. And then again, with your ruler, just pop it inside there, making sure it's all spread out, like so. And now, when you fold in your sides, once we've put the extra bits on, that will be easier to do. That will fold down. Now, it's up to you how you want to have it, but it, the way I've done it to close is I have the back one going over the front one. Okay, so you can see the front one there is inside, the, front one, the back one's coming over. So we're going to put our kind of tab on that that's going to come over to the front. But now you should have this nice box coming together. So next we just down to now all the decorations. So I've got all these pieces and I've already done one of my handles. But first of all we're going to decorate the bottom. So you will need two pieces. Again this is entirely up to you. Once you see what I'm doing you can completely design this. You could have it really fancy, edged, all sorts. But you want eight and a half by one and you want two pieces. And basically what you want to do is just take a wedge off. Now I usually do about a quarter of an inch. I'm just cutting that wedge off. Then with that wedge, take it to the other side, flip it over and pop it exactly in the same place and then just trace along it with your scissors like so. So you can get rid of those two pieces and now I've got that shape. Then, because you'll have two pieces of this, put that one on top of your other piece and just trace it and just cut them. So actually that one there, I can take a little bit more off. It doesn't matter because one's on the front and one's on the back. Basically, you want two pieces like that. But that's how that's just how I've done it, kept it simple. But now you could use your decorative punches and go along this top one and do something really fancy. But now they are going to stick on the bottoms of our bag, like so. And that's what I mean, you can put anything on it. You could put some, you know, dec decorate this all with some nice flat back pearls. It's entirely up to you. So get them stuck down on the base, on the front and the back. Okay, so there's my front and back. Next, we need to decorate the top. So you will need two pieces that are eight and a half again by two. So these are just the next size up. And these are gonna stick on the top of each of your flaps. So that one's gonna go on there, like so. And then this one is going to go on that one. Again, it's completely optional, but if you are using a paper like I am, this really does start to really kind of strengthen the whole bag. Plus, I just love the contrast of the plane against the pattern. So that's why I've done it. So I'm going to get those both stuck down. And there we go. So now that is so much easier for me to manage. Now I've got that strength there and on top. It's not kind of, not that it was, but it just doesn't really want to kind of fall in on itself or it stays all lined up and everything. So... Um, but yeah, you can see now it's starting to come together really nicely. Next, I'm going to add my tab. So that's this piece here. So like I said, make sure you've got the score line here on the back. And then fold the front one down and then the back one down. 
and then this is going to sit, so this is a piece of 2 by 6 and this is going to be stuck right in the middle on the top here this piece completely flush with the back and you just want to stick it on this piece okay so don't put glue so it goes onto here and then it's going to fold over now the easiest way to do this because it's going to wrap over is if you just grab your pencil and just do a pencil mark just where it is there and then just grab your school board and then just line it up so it's actually at three inches but because it was wrapping around I thought it would be over actually so there you go just score it three inches um, and then you can just rub out if you've already put a pencil mark if not you would just score a three and then just burnish that like so so again now what I would do is just flip it over lie it down and again just put a pencil mark up to the end here because then you know where to put your glue because you only want to put your glue within that section there okay so I'm just going to do that now okay so I've just put my glue on the back and then I'm just going to sit this now making sure it's as centred as possible and just grab my ruler and just check what's that three oh no just go over there I have to rub some of that glue off three and a quarter three and a quarter there we go it's so just a little bit off I'll get rid of that glue in a minute but now that will come over nicely on the front there next I'm going to grab my velcro dots again if you want to use magnets you might want a hole punch and put ribbon through this if you don't have velcro dots but Velcro dots, I think, are brilliant. They're cheaper than magnets. I use my magnets more on my mini albums and if I'm making a really strong gift box or something a bit more fancy. But otherwise, if I know these are just going to be, you know, gift bags, then I tend to just use Velcro dots. And then just stick that over and then carefully make sure it's stuck to both sides, but lift it up and then you can really stick them down. And again, that one there fold it back over and then I'm going to add my flower which is going to sit there oh it looks so pretty so I've got my hot glue which I find obviously is much much better make sure that's all nicely covered and then I'm just going to sit that on an angle kind of in the middle of that oh I didn't round off my edges I can do that still I can still get in there and do that so that's okay you don't have to actually it doesn't really make too much of a difference I'm just going to sit that there. Okay, so while that's drying, we can then make a handle. So I've already done one, and I've got the other one here, and my buckles. Now the buckles, I think you get a pack of 16 from the works. I shared them last time, and then I went back on and checked, and they'd sold out. Now I'm not saying that I've created that kind of rush sellout, but you never know. So I will have a look again. Hopefully they're there. Um, but they are really handy to have in your stash. You can see I've used them on a lot of my gift bags now. Um, and they just add a nice kind of touch I think. So for the straps, these ones are shorter so I'm doing a half an inch by 12 inches so the whole you know length of my 12 by 12. The longer ones I cut two pieces of the length of the letter paper or A4 so the eight and a quarter or eight and a half. I done two strips of half an inch by eight and a quarter and then I stuck them together by about half an inch and then wrap them round and that's what's given me look that really long strap you can see there where I've done the join so each side of this is eight and a quarter and eight and a quarter so that's how you get the really long ones this time I just wanted to try it with the shorter ones which is 12 okay so you'll see what these look like in a minute so once you've done that um, you've got your strips just kind of curl them a little bit it just helps with the overall finish and then you'll need two pieces of three quarters of an inch by one and a half and these are going to be these bits here to stick it down now if you don't have the buckles all you will be doing is sticking your handles onto the front direct like so and then put a decorative brad or um, again some nice big you know flowers or something over the front if you want to but that's all you'll do for your handles okay but if you've got these buckles or if you're creative and you can die cut some circled little discs and then die cut again so you've got like a little ring you can use card instead of this buckle so if you imagine that buckles card you need to have that shape okay so all you do is first of all I'm just gonna curl the very ends of this 
pop a bit of glue, just run a tiny bit along the bottom there, like so. And then I want to put the curved edge in first on the actual handle and then just wrap it around until it joins with the card on the other side, like so. Just hold that there for a minute. Okay, and then do exactly the same on the other end. Okay, and then with these smaller pieces, again, just kind of curve them with your bone folder. And then pop it in the bottom. Now the reason I've done them three quarters of an inch is because that is the exact width of the bottom of that buckle. So again, you could, you know, you may have to change the width of these pieces depending on what you've got. And then those are just going to completely stick together. So just fold it over perfectly so they line up like so. And then just do the same on the other one. Okay, so you should now have two of these straps. And then you just need to stick them down. It's entirely up to you where you want to put them. So let's have a little look because I haven't done this smaller length. Um, I think I might have these ones coming right off the top this time, then actually further down. I think they look quite good, kind of hanging off the top like that. So I'm going to do those like that. So let's stick one down. I'm going to use my hot glue because I just think it would be a bit stronger. And I'm going to do this one here. So this one is, let's check my distance here. I'm not the best ruler, but I'll just grab this one. One and one and a half. Yeah, one and a half. So again, let's bring this one round and do one. Is it one and a half from the edge or was it one and a, yeah. So one and a half. So it's gonna be there. So again, a little bit of glue. You can kind of line it up. I can see where it is anyway. And there we go. So that is the shorter handle on the top there. Doesn't that look really I love these. It's the buckles, I think, just really make it, and those Prima flowers are stunning. And then again, on this one here, just put a little bit of glue. One and a half, so there. And again, one and a half, so we are there. And there you have it. They feel really strong as well. Look at that. How adorable. Absolutely love these. I just... Yeah, again, I'm talking to myself, <laughs> I'm just recording, and I just, I love them. I think they look so, so pretty. And then that will just open up, revealing this really roomy gift bag. And again, these will look amazing in Christmas um, patterns, and you could have, you know, a snowman here, or holly, and or a poinsettia. I mean, yeah, it will look absolutely gorgeous. So that's that one with the shorter handles and then the longer handles and again you can see where I've brought them down it just creates a very different look to those ones that are on the top but both equally beautiful so there you have it I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial I've been really excited to share this one and um, yeah get crafting share everything over on Mixed Up Crafters which I'm sure you will because I know a couple of ladies that I think are going to be rushing to do this one and um, yeah I'll be back again next week with another tutorial thanks for watching bye